It's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. Now, this past week, wasn't a whole lot going on. We're having to deal with, you know, the Pride Demon Month nonsense. You know, people are tired of it. Uh, companies are realizing regular folk, normal people... Are tired of the pride bullshit because it's uh, all it is is celebrating sex a sexual orientation and nobody gives a shit at least normal people don't um, so they're starting to uh, walk back on their shit with that uh, the cultural war shifting uh, you know, parents and, and normal people, they're just, they're getting tired of the BS uh, from the alphabet community. And it's going to end up stopping. Uh, the alphabet community or the trans community is doing more damage to themselves by trying to push that nonsense on other people. Keep it to yourselves. And, you know, the activists need to be quiet and leave it alone because they're causing all the problems for the rest of you in the alphabet community. Anyways, I saw that crap and I saw something to do with Ukraine and the war and all that crap where the Ukraine soldiers are now putting uh, Nazi symbols on their uh, uniforms. You know, and doing the whole, uh, you know, uh, Hail Hitler uh, salute and shit. Which is nuts. I don't understand why they're doing that. But whatever. Uh, I don't know what's going on over there, but something's, something strange is happening. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some retarded people who wanted to send them money, uh, including the Democrats, or Demon Rats, whatever you want to call them. I, uh, I wouldn't be sending them fuckers any money. It's not their money. Anyways, saw that. I think China's getting ready to get a spanking because they're trying to provoke a bunch of countries, not just the United States, but several other countries in the waters over there. They're like uh, almost ramming boats. Uh, they're stealing the fish out of the water on the African seas near India, and it's pissing all them countries off. Uh, just a bunch of shits going on that China's doing that's pissing a lot of fucking countries off. And they act like they're too big for their britches. They don't care. Their new general's a piece of shit. And uh, I think they're getting ready to get a rude awakening. Uh, they're going to get a spanking. So we'll see. But I bet that's what it comes to. Anyways, that's all the big news I really saw for this past week. Um, before I mention this next part, I, I just let me explain. I, I, if you've watched my videos before, you know I do not care for uh, you know ninety-eight percent of all the new shows that are being pumped out. They just suck. Writers, this generation of writers 
and Ollie Weird, they suck. They can't write worth the shit. They can't tell good stories. Everything has to be reboots or remakes to carry that title so they can get a cash grab because they can't write uh, a decent story. Anyways, I saw this tele new television show called Foobar, uh, which stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. I thought, well, if it's got Arnie in it, it's got to be halfway decent, right? Oh my god. I got through like maybe two episodes and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not watching this dumbass shit. Um, first of all, even though Arnold has gotten really old, like, he, I don't know, what's he in his 70s or 80s? I don't know. But you could tell that this fight scene at the very beginning of the show was just so overly choreographed. And he's moving so slow. And I'm just like, okay. Eh, I'll let it slide. It's Arnie, right? But then what clinched it for me, and I knew this was what they were leading to as soon as they, as they did this. He goes home to his family, and he has like this birthday for his daughter or some shit. You know, and uh, as soon as they introduced the daughter, I was all like, oh, this ain't about Arnold. This is about his daughter. I guarantee it. You know, he's supposed to be some kind of super spy or whatever. And I was like, I guarantee it's about his daughter. She's probably in the uh, CIA or some shit, and he don't know about it. And sure enough, you know, she starts lying to him at the birthday party about some injuries she has. I was like, yep, that's exactly what's going on. This is about her. This show is literally about her. You know, they start cramming you with the feminist bullshit right off the bat. I was like, oh, another one. And this is the reason why I can't stand most new shows. They try to push this feminist bullshit bullshit which is not reality it's fantasy like you know I know the show is supposed to be fiction but they're always trying to do this feminist female lead in all the new TV shows and it just nobody likes it they hate these shows and it shows like you know the numbers but they still they still try to push it nobody cares about feminism because it's a bullshit cult. Evil cult. But anyways. I knew that from then on it, it was all about her. Sure enough, he goes to this country to stop this dictator. They don't tell him. He's got to extract one of their spies out. And I knew who it was. Sure enough, he shows up there and it's her. And I'm like, you know, I was, I was done. I was like, okay, this, this show just turned into stupid. So, I, 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 fuck that stupid shit. I'm not watching another feminist lead show. Fuck that shit. Because they suck. They're totally unrealistic. You have to have a little bit of realism in your show for it to fucking work. I don't give a fuck if it's fantasy or sci-fi or horror or whatever. You have to have a little bit of realism. Or it's not going to work. It's not going to resonate, uh, resonate with the audience. It just won't. And anything to do with feminism does not resonate with the audience. That's why they suck. Nobody wants to watch those shows. But that's what 98% of the fucking television shows that they keep putting out are. Anyways, moving on. I just here recently watched that show, or, t or not TV show, but uh, movie uh, Renfield with Nicolas Cage's Dracula. Um... I actually had some pretty cool scenes in it. Some of the stuff that they were doing of how 
uh, Dracula was fighting and shit. And I, I, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Nicolas Cage is one of the best actors ever. I mean, he really gets into the role, whatever he does. That's what makes him such a good actor. Uh, and he does really good job in, in this movie. He's, he's awesome as Dracula. I like him. Because he's... He's got like a fucked up evil Dracula is what he plays. It's pretty cool. Um, however... That's about the only good part of the, the whole fucking movie. Yo, Renfield is... Uh, convinced... Uh, you know uh, that you know he could be a normal human being when he's not uh, he's a familiar for Dracula he takes care of him and he has like this superpower if he eats bugs he's the bug man which we've seen in previous uh, vampire movies you know it gives him like superpowers when he eats bugs for a, a short time uh, however, then they have to bust out the, the whiny oriental girl in it. You know, I think she's the same one from, uh, I, I can't think of the comedy. She's in a comedy, and I'm not sure if it's the same one who plays in Star Wars or not. But anyways, she's this chubby little oriental woman, and... You know, they're making to where she could kick the shit out of these really huge buff six foot dudes. And I, and she's real, I mean, she's like 4'11. Well, he's 98 pounds. Well, actually, she probably weighs a little bit more since she's chubby. But, you know, she's like kicking their asses. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, she plays a cop, but it's more like she's a security guard. It's retarded. And uh, I can't stand her. She's real loud mouth and annoying. This actor, actress, or whatever. I can't. I, I hate her. I don't like her at all. She ruins the fucking movie. But anyways, other than her, the movie's okay. It would be so far much better if she wasn't in it and they had a guy playing her character. I, it would have been ten times better. But anyways, other than that, the movie's okay. I give it a thumbs up and thumbs down. I liked him playing Dracula, Nicolas Cage. That's what made the, the movie, and I was able to actually watch the entire film. Otherwise, I wouldn't have watched it if they had someone else playing the part. Because I can't stand that Oriental woman. Or the, the Asian chick. I, ugh. No, thank you. Anyways. Uh, that's what I have for you. For that. Let's get on to your B-movie reviews. All right, movieholics, this week is Sci-Fi Week. got a couple strange ones here for you um, again if you know me you've watched my videos you know I don't really care for most of the movies that are after the year 2000 there are a few that are okay 
But after 2010, you just get into some really shitty crap. And it's been that way ever since. You just... The writers in Hollyweird cannot write good fucking stories. Anyways. Um... I'd never heard of these movies. I figured I'd check them out. The first one was done in 2007. But it didn't really do all that well. Only made about 150 grand. Uh, it's a French film, so it's a foreign film. And you know how I feel about foreign films as well. 98% of all foreign films just suck. It's just the reality. Some of them, every once in a while, you'll find a gem, but ma the majority of them just suck. Uh, unless you're talking about Hong Kong uh, or Kung Fu films, uh, you know they're going to be cheesy and, and silly and, for the most part, dumb. But because of the the action, the martial arts action uh, is usually really good. You pretty much let most of the the silliness slide. Anyways, this movie is called Eden Log, and uh, it stars Clovis Cornelik and Vamela uh, Pons. I hope I got those names right. I don't know. Um, I'm sometimes bad at foreign names, trying to pronounce them. And I apologize if I pronounced those wrong. Um, so before I touch on some points of this film, because there's several things I want to touch on, I uh, I'm going to tell you, you know, basically the story. Um, you you have a, a like a near future where there's this huge gigantic city like pretty much the last city on earth kinda and it's getting its energy from these trees like this forest in the middle of this uh, 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 the, the city and it's this forest is like covered by this huge glass dome now there's a network or a, a corporation, you know, the evil futuristic corporation called Eden Log. Um, they built this underground area underneath the trees or forest or whatever uh, to take care of the tree and continuously supply the city uh, with power or energy. Now, it does not, the movie does not go and explain how this, it's extracting organic energy from a fucking forest or trees. It doesn't explain it, you know, what the, how the, the source really is. What it does explain is the, in this future, the underground area has to be maintained, the, the, the trees do the forest so they invite immigrants to the city but tell them in order to get a citizenship uh, you know above ground in the main part of the city they have to work a while and uh, you know taking care of the tree underground in this facility now this tree produces some kind of weird sap and they feed this sap to the workers who in turn are, you know, it makes them work harder, uh, move faster, you know, it makes them stronger, that kind of thing for a limited time. Uh, however, uh, the sap has become polluted and become bad and it turns the workers into like these mutants or freaks. Um, now there's a reason why it's become bad and why the trees have become corrupted or bad and I'll explain that here in a little bit. 
Uh, anyways, uh, this guy, you know, at the very beginning, he wakes up, he has amnesia, he doesn't know what the fuck's going on or where he's at. He wakes up in this cave with mud and all caked on him. He finds this dead dude that's literally turned pretty much to bones. And uh, there's like this uh, chest plate or something on him with a light on it. And he takes, takes this chest piece and uh, with the light and gets his claw, claws his way or climbs his way out through this tunnel with like wires hanging down and uh, you know plastic tubing and a bunch of uh, you know roots from these trees and he gets out and he, he's trying to figure out what's going on and he's got to go through a couple of gates uh, that are like metal rotating doors with bars on them and he pushes on them and every time he does it triggers uh, this message with a bunch of women like some type of hollow projector and one of the women are speaking English and she's saying welcome to Eden you know, we invite all immigrants here, blah, 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 we welcome you, yada, yada, and explains the whole, what you having to work to get your citizenship. Um, now, the main story is this guy is trying to figure out what's going on. So he's going up through the levels of the facility. He's like at the very bottom. He's working his way up the facility to try to get out. That's the main plot of the story. And as you're going on traveling with them, you find out a lot about what's going on. Uh, you know, he runs, he keeps running across the, it's almost like a video game. That was the atmosphere I got. It's like from a video game. It was really weird. You know, he's trying to solve and put pieces together of a mystery. Uh, he finds these dead technicians that are scientists that have these little like hand scanners and they tell him you know he's not he doesn't have scientific clearance but when he finds a dead body of a technician he sticks their hand in there and they have also have like these little key cards scientific key cards and then it tells him a little bit of what's going on. He sees video surveillance. Uh, that there was a... Uh, uh, kind of like a rebellion or revolt. Because the corporation's hiding a secret. Go figure. And... Uh, you know, he sees bits and pieces. And he does that like three or four times while he's going up. He also meets a girl who's a, a botanist. Uh, take care of the plants or whatever. She apparently doesn't know what's going uh, going on exactly, except for that there were some security guards that showed up, and they're trying to stop the workers. And apparently, there was she realizes there's some revolt going on, but she's kept herself locked up in a way even though she knows about the workers turning into mutants. Uh, she does this thing where she asks him if she could test him. Run tests on him. She's not a medical doctor. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? Because apparently everyone else is pretty much turned except for her and the guards, the security guards that are roaming throughout the place. And uh, she thinks it's interesting that he hasn't turned yet. So she wants to test him. When, when He allows it, which is weird, because she has to pump the fucking uh, uh, sap, the tree sap into him to find out what's going on. And then transfer blood into the tree, which is weird, but whatever, you know. When she does this, 
instead of him becoming like a mutant, uh, the roots of the tree, uh, they start to bloom, flowers and green and shit. You know, the unhealthy roots have now become healthy and grow has grown really fast. And she's like, what the fuck? And then she's like, what the, who the hell are you? Blah, blah, blah. And then the guards and mutants show up and she escapes and he follows her. Uh, and for some whatever reason, it's like he's going through some kind of transformation himself. But he's not tur turning into one of the regular mutants. Uh, but at the same time, he ends up raping her or some shit. Because he can't help himself. Uh, because of the transformation. And, uh, you know, it kind of looks like he's disgusted with himself for doing it. When he comes to. And she's traumatized. But then she realizes that he really is. He, he did not want to do it. Blah, blah, blah. She knows something's going on with him. She just don't know why. Anyway, she follows him. Um, on their way out. And then, at some point in time, they're almost out. And then the guards and the mutants, uh, they're about to clash. And to hide from, they go to hide from him. And she decides to go back because... Apparently, she realizes when he raped her, she became infected. So, she stays down below. But she throws her her scientific computer card, access card, to him. Well, he notices that the very top layer is the security guard office. And one of the security guards goes up top to get reinforcements or something while the mutants and the security officers are fighting. Uh, he breaks that dude's neck, goes into the security office because the security guard let him in there uh, just before he broke his neck. He goes in there and he finds out that uh, that, you know, the security guards were sent in to stop the rebellion and he finds out that when the workers uh, that the corporation is uh, you know immigrants they're they're working them to death like they end up killing them because they're making taking that sap and they're working so much harder and faster and longer it ends up killing them. it drains them so they, then they take their bodies and stick them in these little cages and hang them in the tree and then the tree feeds on them. Uh, it's what corrupted the tree or the roots of all these trees. Uh, so no one actually ever gets citizenship into the city. They all, they're all fed to this, these trees. Um, so he figures that out and then he, he also figures out that somehow he was the chief security guard that squashed the rebellion and he got infected and killed the guy that he first found the chess piece on which also is has a body cam so that's how he figures out who he is now uh, towards the end he's given a, 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 a promotion more pay and then told the 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 city council tells them we need uh, a few good men like you who knows the secret and can keep the secret and keep things running smoothly blah 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 and at the very end he, he goes outside into the forest and in the middle is like this weird I don't know what it the fuck it is. It's like this pillar with roots, uh, uh, tree roots, and he digs into the ground, busts one of the roots, or snaps it and sticks it inside of him, and then the tree starts blossoming and uh, uh, growing rapidly and breaks the dome. Uh, you know, everything starts becoming green and then it spreads throughout the city 
destroying the city. And that's the end of the movie. Like, okay, whatever. Um, first of all, again, if you've ever watched any of my videos, you know I'm not a big fan of black and white movies. I let some of the shit before the 50s slide because they were all black and white. So every now and then I'm okay with that. But anything new like that Sin City with Bruce Willis, it's just dumb. It's terrible. I can't stand movies that do black and white shit. This movie starts off like that. It's all black and white. And I about shut it off because the first 15 minutes... Is this this annoying strobe light, and you can't see what the fuck's going on? Uh, but then it lightens up a little bit, and you can see some color, but it's that pale off white color, you know, throughout the entire movie. It was this movie was starts off kind of like a thriller, or you know, sort of, and then it turns into a horror movie. Uh, a really bad cheesy horror film. Uh, it was just dull. It started getting really dull and depressing and boring. Uh, when I read the the you know summary about what it's supposed to be about, it, it interested me. I was like, well, that sounds kind of neat. You know, it's interesting. I'll check it out. But as I started watching the movie, I was like, this is getting I don't know, long and drawn out, and it didn't make, a, a lot of it didn't make any sense, I mean, you really have to try to piece shit together to figure out what the fuck's really going on, um, throughout the entire movie, it was just weird, and it didn't make, it just, I hate that black and white crap, ugh, like I said, it was colorized, but it just barely, you know, it was really dark, Everything else was pale white. It was just, uh, I don't know. It just, uh, the movie was not very good at all. Um, I didn't care for it. Uh, the story, it started off interesting, but like I said, it's played like a video game. Finding out clues and shit on the way. I give it two thumbs down. I didn't care for this movie. Uh, you might. I don't know. I didn't care for it. I thought it sucked. Alright, moving on. So, the next one I watched was, again, something I'd never heard of or seen. I just read the, the summary of it and it sounded interesting at first until I started watching it. Anyways, this movie was done in 2013, and again, it all—it also only made about 150,000. Uh, you know, this is worldwide. Uh, this is also a foreign movie. It was done in Portugal. Uh, that may have something to do with it. Also, um, it's called RPG, Real Playing Game, and it starred Sin Barry. And uh, Rugger Howard. Now, Sam Barry, he plays a younger version of Rugger Howard. You only get about seven minutes of Rugger Howard. Uh, five at the beginning, like two at the end. So it kind of ruins the movie because he's the main star. Uh, anyways, uh, before I touch on uh, some of the things that are wrong with this movie, uh, let me tell you the story. So at first it sounded interesting. This guy, you know, he's a billionaire. Uh, he pays this corporation uh, to m make him young again. Uh, put him in a uh, younger body. Uh, and in return, uh, he's got to pay them like tons of money or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, however, there's a catch. In order to get the young body, he has to play a game. A game where he kills the other players and then he gets 
if he wins, he gets to keep his body. Uh, so, there are several other players who are really old and are basically terminal. They're all dying. And they all get this chance. And they all go through this screening process and they get to choose a young person who they would like to be. Yada, yada, yada. Well, the thing is, is what are they offering the young people to play the game or be a part of this experiment or whatever they tell them? Because it doesn't explain any of that. Uh, you know, unless it's just a computer generated version, you know, of the young person. Other than that, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't explain that. Anyways, they all go into this virtual reality type uh, part of the game. And they're in an area where it's been, you know, computer generated and, you know, they only have this one little area, uh, a banded place, uh, like an arena, they, they can't escape. And you would think it would be kind of like, you know, the 100 games and all that shit was blowing up at the time. So you'd think it was similar to that, but it's not. It's really, the characters are really boring. Like, they they have this deal where they've got to try to figure out who's who before they kill them. And then after they kill them, they got to go into this one main area in this abandoned building where they got to choose who they think they killed. Like there's holograms of all the people, all the old people, and they got to determine did they kill that person or that that person, you know. If they choose wrong, they die. Um, but everyone's young, so they don't know who's who. Uh, they get a little biography with each person on the hologram, but that's it. And so they're trying to figure out who's who. And then after they kill them, they decide, they go and pick who they think it was. Now, and it has to be the person who does the killing. Like if you, even if you accidentally kill that person, you have to go choose. If you don't, you can die. Or supposedly you will die. Uh, the game master tells him you have to choose or the, the game will randomly select someone to kill. Which never happens. They don't take that chance. Um, but most of the most of the thing is is about them just they don't care who's who, they're just fucking each other, you know. Uh, a couple of the guys chose to be women, you know, so that was kind of weird, too. None of the women chose to be guys, which was kind of weird and dumb. But still, I, they're talking about occupations and all this other crap, like, it's supposed to be interesting, kind of like... Uh, who's who, who's who or who's done it clue finder type story but it just ended up being dumb and they weren't killing each other like with weapons or anything like that even though they did have a couple of weapons uh, they found one gun because it was like a bonus thing but they didn't nobody knew it was there uh, but they did find and it's the girl it was like, she's the video game expert, you know. Oh, there's got to be, like, bonuses and crap laying around, you know. Health kits and shit like that. Whatever. Anyway, she's the only person to find a gun. Which gets trashed quite early. 
or right off the bat, you know, that it's found. Um, otherwise, they don't have any weapons or anything. She carries around a stick for most of the time. That's about it. Everybody pretty much kills everyone else uh, by other means. Uh, like a rock or something like that. I think uh, Rugger Howard's younger version, he, he found like a broken piece of bottle, uh, which makes no sense because they didn't have any food or drink the entire time they're in there. So that didn't make any sense where he found the broken bottle. But whatever. So towards the end, Rucker Howard's younger version kills everybody off. And he makes it to the end. And then at the very end, they, he tells him that he wants to keep the body he's in. But he doesn't even look down and look at himself. You know, to see if he's actually in a younger body. He just tells him he wants to keep the younger body he's in. And the guy is the gatekeeper or game master, whatever. You know, he, he throws this insane price at him. And he says, no problem. And he pays it. And then he leaves. Well, when he leaves, you see that he's still old. He just thinks he's young. He sees himself... Uh, in a mirror or something thinks he's young but he's still really old so he got lied he got conned and it's kind of a dumb movie it didn't like I said it was really kind of boring um, I, I'm surprised I even made made it through the movie you know I like Rucker Hour but this this movie sucked he wasn't even the main per actor in it you know they had a bunch of nobodies I mean they were nobodies foreign film I don't know what he was thinking when he took the role but whatever uh, two thumbs down again another movie after 2000 that uh, the majority of them just suck they do n the writers nowadays cannot write they can't story tell. They suck. So, don't bother watching it. It was a terrible movie. Um, so, Movieholics, that's all I have for you this week. So, if you have any thoughts about what I talked about earlier in the video, Please leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you can think of any underrated or movies you think I've never heard of, please leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below. I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can. So, until next time, I told you to be told the truth, and you've just been told.